Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Stewart's Watercolor. At any time during the video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my online courses, you can click on the links at the end. Hi, this is Rick. I'm in my studio. And this is the first painting in a series of four paintings for my mini painting series uh, number three. This will be the third project I'm going to have posted uh, for mini paintings on my website. And along with the recording, you'll find a, a reference of this finished painting and a template that you can download and use if you choose to paint this. So the setup I'm going to be using for this painting will be this simple setup of the artwork and my palette. So this is set up to do a, uh, a small painting, five and a half inches by seven and a half inches. So there's four of these for this, this particular project. And if you take a quarter sheet of watercolor paper, uh, 11 inches by 15 inches, and divide it into four pieces uh, in the quarters, you'll have uh, four sheets this size, five and a half by seven and a half inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. And uh, these aren't intended to be uh, super complex paintings. They're not real involved big paintings. They're just uh, small paintings that you can practice some skills with and have a little bit of fun with. And they fit nicely in a, uh, a small uh, mat, um, I believe 8 by 10 and uh, uh, it works out uh, quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here with the, with the painting. And I'm going to begin with a sky and I'm just going to start with a simple blue wash. And I'm working at an angle, about 20 degree angle. So I'm taking some cerulean blue and I'm just gonna paint uh, kind of a cerulean blue sky. I'm gonna leave a little few small areas for uh, to suggest maybe some clouds or something. Just keep a little more, keep a little, uh, keep it interesting. I'm using just a soft wash brush. And I'll take a little bit of water and just soften those edges a little bit, just clear water. I'm coming right down to the top of this mountain that I've drawn in here. So this is a lot of imagination in this scene. So I'm not really using a reference photo. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. So I've left a few little, little breaks of white in the paper and, and soft edges and a couple marks there just to keep it interesting. And um, next, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to paint this mountain here. But before I do, I want to dry this because uh, if I paint this now, it's just going to bleed into the sky that I just painted. And I don't want to... So I'm going to paint this uh, mountain, a uh, little mountain scene here, uh, the mountain shape that I've got back here next. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get rid of the cerulean blue for now. It's just a very it's mostly water. Let's get rid of that. And uh, I'm going to take a, a little raw sienna and uh, I'm going to take a touch of cerulean blue just to, to gray that down a little. Just want a very light, warm tone. And I'm going to take some uh, sap green, a little uh, royal blue, which is a dark blue that I, I use a lot. I'm going to take a little lizard crimson I want to gray that down and maybe add a little more blue to uh, to part of that all right so I'm gonna just I'm gonna paint this as if there's a you know some uh, some areas of earth, of dirt and, and whatnot, rocks and things showing. And then uh, I'm gonna come in here with this kind of grayed down green that I have. So I'm working wet on dry. I started wet on dry. Add a little more blue to part of that. And use some of that. I just have a small uh, 
Got a number six round brush that I'm using. Maybe get a little more blue. Well, kind of a blue green. I didn't need quite that much blue. We'll go out here. So this is in the distance. Sometimes I'll paint that wet in wet. Uh, de depends uh, on what I'm doing. And I'm going to just add a little bit in there. If I, I was going to go back and add a little bit right there, but if I do right now, because it's starting to dry, it's kind of a damp condition, I'd probably get a backwash. So once again, I'm going to dry this layer, and then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start to paint some trees over top of it. So that's dry. I'm going to take uh, this quill brush I like to use. I'm going to take some raw sienna, a little cornacre and gold. Just a warm color. You don't have to have the exact colors. Just use you know, something that comes close or something you like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't have to use the exact colors. Use what you have on your palette. And uh, let's snap green. I'm going to add a little red to that. This is a pyro red. You know, if you don't have that, use a cadmium or Windsor red or something like that. All right. So right now, I'm going to actually I want to use some cooler red or green, and I'm going to come in with a little, a little warmer. So I'm just painting the top of the tree line. You know, at the moment here, I'm not trying to pick out individual trees so much. I was just trying to make this paint this shape. Like take a little red and put in there. I use both warm and cool. I'll take a little gold, a mixture of gold and green, and just bring this down. You know, it's much more interesting to have a variety of colors and temperature than just one flat colored wash. So you can see some reds and greens and some yellow, kind of yellow greens and golds in there. And um, now I'm just kind of working from the back forward. And uh, I dry frequently depending on where I'm painting. And in this particular instance, I I want to maintain these edges so I dry before I'm going to go paint over top of it. So I'm going to hit this with a dryer again. Okay, so now I'm going to work with some of the same mixture here. I'm going to stay on the cool side a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to go from here. using this quill brush a little higher up here get some of this warmer color it's a much darker value that I'm painting in this uh, this middle ground. Just make it look like there's some rocks or something here. OK. 
Okay. I'm gonna work in I think some some of this green here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that in now. Put this in kind of a grassy area out here before it hits the uh, the gravel and rocks or yeah, those are one of my rocks that I wanted there. All right. So once again, I want to uh, see, well, even this shape out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a quick dry. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, clean my palette. That's something else I do frequently is clean my palette. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to mix a color here for this shoreline. I'm going to take some raw sienna, a little quinacridone and burnt orange. You could use burnt sienna. I'm going to take a little uh, uh, cerulean. Add it to some of that, kind of gray that down a little. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint this kind of as my beach color here. Actually, I'm gonna take some quinacridone and gold too, like that gold tone. burn orange all right touch that burn orange here Now I'm going to dry that and I'm going to come in with some uh, some blue tones on that water. Okay, so uh, clear this up a little. I'm going to take my wash brush. I'm going to take a little of that cerulean blue. And I'm going to drop that cerulean blue in here. I'm going to leave a few areas of white showing through. I'm going to use some water and thin that, let that just gradate to a lighter value. And then uh, let's see here. I'm going to take a little darker, I'm going to take some of this royal blue. I'm going to add some of that back here. Maybe even a little more, a little, just a touch darker. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to put a few darker values in here and I'm going to I'm going to pull a little bit of color for some reflection down into the water. Okay. So we're dry there. I'll take a little of this uh, uh, green and I make the back to my blue green. Gray that down with a little alizarin. Might be a little much. Let's see. So I'm gonna 
I'm actually going to put some clear water here. Touch of clear water. I don't. I'm using a soft brush. I don't want to agitate that too much. But I'm just going to. I'm going to drop. Like it's picking up a bit of the reflection. I'm going to do the same here. I'm leaving a little gap between where I put that wash. And uh, I want this to be warmer. So I have a little bit of water where I wet that. So I'm picking up just the suggestion of some of that reflection. And uh, Take some of this burnt orange. I use this royal blue, a little of that, mix them together, give me a dark value. And uh, I'm just going to put a few dark uh, touches here. Is there not too much? I think a little darker blue. Just a very slight, kind of a middle value right at the base of that. bit of a cooler dark value and let's see I might just a little bit more in here The touch of the darker value. Okay, let's dry that. And I actually, I think I'm going to take just a little bit more of this burnt orange. more color here. Okay, let me dry this. And that's it. Just a very uh, you know, simple little painting, like I said, five and a half by seven and a half inches, and uh, you know, not too complex. Simple shapes, just experimenting, mixing some greens, working with it, control of the edges, and working the values from dark to light. Uh, so uh, have fun with this one.